Hi everyone. Welcome to Vidyalakshmi School YouTube channel. This is Naresh Reddy, Chemistry Faculty of Vidyalakshmi CVSC School. Okay. Now, today's let us discuss about one of the most important topic of J and NET. Our topic is colligator properties of plus 2 solution chapter. Okay. So, here in this session, what we are going to discuss means what are colligator properties, how many properties are there, those properties depends on what and independent on what. Okay. And those properties are they related to the molar mass of solute or not. So, those concepts let us discuss in this session. Okay. So, shall we start? Yes. Let us go to elevation in boiling point. Okay. So, before going to this, what is boiling point? Let us see. Okay. What is boiling point means? Okay. If you are increasing the temperature of a liquid, if you are increasing temperature of a liquid, then vapor pressure of that liquid also increases. If you are increasing the vapor pressure of a liquid, then sorry, temperature of a liquid, then vapor pressure of that liquid increases. Is it clear? Now, at somewhat temperature, the vapor pressure of that liquid is equal to atmospheric pressure. At somewhat temperature, that temperature I am taking this. Okay. So, at somewhat temperature, the vapor pressure of that liquid is equal to atmospheric pressure. At what temperature? The vapor pressure of liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure that respect to temperature we are calling boiling point of that liquid. Okay. Let us say about that boiling point for the pure solvent and solution. Which one is more, which one less and what is the reason for that. Okay. Just now only we discussed. What is that means? When non-volatile solute is adding to volatile solvent, then what about the vapor pressure of that solution is it decrease or increase means it decreases right okay so let us let us again discuss that same concept here so this is pure solvent this is pure solvent and here some solute particles are adding to the pure solvent that is violet color okay so in this i am taking this is the surface of liquid and this is the surface of solution. Okay. Since solute is non-volatile, it won't enter into the vapor state. Okay. Only the solvent molecules present in this solution enter into vapor state. Okay. This one we are calling solution. Okay. But this one we are calling pure solvent. Okay, this concept we discussed. Since pure solvent molecules are more on this surface, more number of vapors are present here. But here since some of the solute particles are occupying on this surface, then number of solvent molecules occupying on this surface decrease. So that automatically the number of vapor molecules coming from the solvent less. Okay, so that this one show less vapor and this one show more vapors. So, here pure solvent show more vaporization so that produce more vapors. More vapors. But in this, here less vapors are present. Less vapors are present. Okay. Let us take. This one is showing 10 atmosphere. Okay. Or let us take. This one is showing 0 0.8 atmosphere, 0 0.8 atmosphere I am taking and this one showing must and should less than this value. So, that I am taking this one as 0 0.6 atmosphere. Okay. So, the vapors or the pressure exerted by the vapors in this solution is 0 0.6 atmosphere and the pressure exerted by the vapors of the pure solvent 
is 0 0.8 atmosphere. Okay. If you are increasing the temperature of this pure solvent and solution, means if you are heating both the pure solvent and solution, then those liquid molecules present in the pure solvent and solution absorb that much heat energy so that their kinetic energy increases and the more number of the liquid molecules enter into the vapor state. Is it clear? So, in both cases if you are heating because when we are increasing the temperature on that automatically we are giving the heat energy to the pure solvent as well as solution. Okay. So, here to the same extent I am giving the heat energy to the pure solvent and solution means I am heating to this so pure solvent and solution to the same extent. So, the same temperature amount I am giving to both then what is happening means when we are heating both more number of liquid molecules are enter into the surface so that those enter into the vapor state. Here also few liquid molecules enter into the surface so that those also enter into the vapor state. So, here also vapor molecules increases and here also vapor molecules increases. So, the pressure exerted by those vapors also further increase. Is it clear? Now, if we see here let us take let us take equal amount of the molecules or enter into the vapor state. Okay. If we again compare here in which case more vaporization is taking place means in pure solvent vaporization is more, but in solution vaporization process is less even we are heating continuously to the same extent for the pure solvent and solution. Okay, the concept we already discussed because here some of the places are occupying with the solute particles, solvent molecules less when they enter into the vapor state then remaining solvent molecules from the solution state they enter into the surface those only again go to the vapor state that means in this same number of the solvent molecules are entering into vapor ok. But here also same number of water molecules are, that is solvent molecules are entering into vapor state but that number is more here compared to here. So, that automatically this one shows much more pressure than this. So, that this one readily reach to the atmospheric pressure than this. Okay. So, this 0 0.1 atmosphere readily reach to the 1 atmosphere at low temperature only means if you are heating to the somewhat less temperature then automatically reach to atmospheric pressure. But in this case since vapor pressure is less to reach to this one to the atmospheric pressure we have to increase the temperature to further more than this because here coming vapors are less during that heating process. So, that vapor pressure again less ok it is not equal to the atmospheric pressure at low temperature further we have to increase then more number of vapors formed here they do not need reach to the atmospheric pressure ok understood this point right. So, that in solution state to reach to the atmospheric pressure we have to increase temperature further more compared to the pure solvent. So, that pure solvent at low temperature only reach to the atmospheric pressure, but for solution at somewhat high temperature reach to the atmospheric pressure ok. So, that we can say this solution has boiling point just now we discussed boiling point is nothing but at what temperature that vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. So, that this one show high boiling point and this one show low boiling point. Do we say like this? This one at low temperature only reaches to the atmospheric pressure. So, that low boiling point, but this one reaches to the atmospheric pressure at somewhat high temperature. So, that high boiling point that means do we say that the boiling point of this pure solution is more than boiling point of the pure solvent. Yes, why it is more means due to decrease in the vapor pressure of that solvent in that solution. Okay, that means is any relation there between the vapor pressure to the boiling point means 
yes that relation is vapor pressure is inversely proportional to boiling point which one show more vapor pressure that one show less boiling point here vapor pressure is more that's a low boiling point but here vapor pressure less so that more boiling point okay so that the solution vapor pressure is sorry the solution boiling point is more than pure wave solvent boiling point that increase in the boiling point of a solution which has non volatile solute compared to the boiling point of pure solvent is called elevation in boiling point elevation means increase elevation means increases so that the boiling point increases here that's why we are calling that as elevation in boiling point okay once again i am saying here solute should be non volatile solute not volatile solute okay so here if we compare the boiling point of pure solvent and solution then boiling point of pure solvent is more than pure solvent but both are boiling at one atmosphere pressure only okay so that if you are taking the graph like this if you are taking the graph between vapor pressure versus temperature then this boiling point corresponds to the solvent because it is showing the low boiling point and this graph corresponds to solution that is this line corresponds to solution but this line corresponds to solvent because solution boiling point is more solvent boiling point less so that this t not b we are calling as boiling point of pure solvent boiling point of pure solvent and this t b we are calling boiling point of solution boiling point of solution okay so that the difference between that boiling point of solution to the boiling point of pure solvent difference between boiling point of solution to the boiling point of pure solvent is called elevation in boiling point that elevation in boiling point we are representing with delta tb that elevation in boiling point we are representing with delta tb that delta tb is nothing but tb minus t not b where tb is boiling point of solution boiling point of solution and t not b means boiling point of pure solvent so the difference we are calling as elevation in boiling point is it clear if on the surface more number of solvent particles are sir more number of solute particles are present then that number of solvent molecule decreases so that we have to increase further temperature to equalize the vapor pressure of that liquid in this solution to the atmospheric pressure okay so that is this boiling point depend or independent on the number of particles on the surface of solution means depends okay so if number of solute particles are more than boiling point of that solution more so that elevation in boiling point is more okay so that that delta tb elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to number of solute particles number of solute particles if number of solute particles are more means boiling elevation in boiling point is more means that value is more than difference is more okay right now that concept we will discuss again in numericals okay so for dilute solution if we take for dilute solution that elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to molality of the solution okay so according to the definition of molality we can write on the molality formula as m is equal to weight of the solute by molecular weight of solute that is m w a m e solute i am taking a so weight of solute by molecular weight of solute into 1000 by weight of solvent okay 
So this one we are nothing but number of moles of solute. So number of moles of solute present in thousand grams of solvent is called molality. So from that definition we I wrote this equation. So that equation if we substitute in this one then we can get delta T B is nothing but T B minus T naught B that equal to K B into W A by M A into thousand by W B. So in place of M I am writing here. Yeah. Okay, and if we remove the proportionality, then we can get a constant value. The constant is called molar elevation constant or ablioscopic constant. Okay, so here, what is that molar elevation constant or ablioscopic constant means? From this, can we write down KB as like this? KB is equal to delta T B by M. Can we write? So if you are taking M as one means one molar solution. One molar solution. Then K B is equal to delta T B. So that how do we define this molar elevation constant or ablioscopic constant means the elevation in boiling point. Delta T B is nothing but elevation in boiling point. The elevation in boiling point of one molar solution is called ablioscopic constant or molar elevation constant. Okay. Now, so by substituting molality formula, then we can get here. And how do we calculate that molar elevation constant or ablioscopic constant value means by using this equation R T B square M by thousand delta H vaporization. Okay. So here delta H vaporization means the amount of energy required to convert to the vapor state from the liquid state. Okay, that energy we are calling as delta H and M means molar mass of the solvent and T B means boiling point of that solvent and R is a gas constant. Okay, so if we substitute these values then we can get K B. Here K B depends on the nature of the solvent. If solvent changes, then KB changes because here M is molar mass of the solvent. When solvent changes, molar mass change, so that KB also automatically change. So that KB depends only on nature of the solvent. Okay. So now once again, if you see this equation, so nothing but delta TB is equal to KB into W by MA into thousand by WB. Here MA is nothing but molar mass of the solute and Tb minus T naught B is nothing but elevation in boiling point. Do we say that elevation in boiling point is inversely proportional to the molar mass of solvent? Yes, it is inversely proportional to molar mass of solvent, sorry solute, molar mass of solute. Okay, right. so this is about elevation in boiling point. And what is the equation to calculate the molar mass of solute using elevation in boiling point? Okay, and how how that molar mass of solute is related to the elevation in boiling point? Okay, now let us see about third colligative property that is depression in freezing point. Okay, so here once again, if we see the same example what we discussed in the elevation in boiling point. Okay, this is pure solvent and this is solution. In this solute and solvent both are occupying only solvent molecules undergo vaporization, but those vapors are less. So that here vapor pressure less for the solution, but pure solvent vapor pressure is more. Is it clear? Now since here vapor pressure is more for this pure solvent means more number of the solvent molecules are enter into the vapor state. Then what about the liquid particles present in this liquid state compared to here? Less. Let us take. Initially 100 solvent molecules are present means 100 liquid molecules are present before vaporization means no molecules are present on the vapor state. Let us take that. Okay. 100 molecules are present in the liquid state. I am assuming that out of the 100, 40 are enter into vapor state. So that vapor molecules are 40, then how many liquid particles there? 60. Total 100. 
40 are in liquid vapor state and 60 are in liquid state. Okay. Now in this, in this, if we say what about the number of vapor molecules? A should be less than 100 or greater than 100. It should be greater than, sorry, less than 40 or greater than 40. Less than 40. Let us take that one as 20. Let us take that one as 20. Then here how many liquid particles there? 18. Is it clear? Okay. Because when we are adding this solute particles, I am not changing the number of solvent molecules. So that here how many solvent total there? That number also here there. Okay. Right. So the total 100 come. So in this 80 liquid particles are present, but in this only 60 liquid particles are present. Okay. Let us take that solvent as water. Let us take that solvent as water. If we are cooling the temperature of this pure water to 0 degree centigrade, all the 60 liquid molecules enter into the ice, means that one freezes. But if you are cooling this one to the 0 degree centigrade, it won't convert to ice state, means it not freezes. Why means? Here more number of liquid particles are there. Okay, so here only 60 there, that 60 only freezes at 0 degree centigrade. Extra 20 molecules are here, those 20 molecules are not freezing at 0 degree centigrade. We have to further cool to freeze those remaining 20 molecules. Okay, since we are cooling further, then what about that freezing point decreases. Okay, so that freezing point of this solution further decreases compared to the freezing point of pure solvent. So that this freezing point is less than 0 degree centigrade means it may be minus 1 degree centigrade or minus 2 degree centigrade or minus 0 0.008 degree centigrade depending on the amount of the solute here. Okay? That means if we compare the freezing point of the solution with respect to the freezing point of the pure solvent, the freezing point of the solution decreases or increases or retains same to the pure solvent, means it decreases. Boiling point increases, but freezing point decreases. That decrease in the freezing point of a solution which has non-volatile solute is called depression in freezing point. Elevation means increase, depression means decreases, okay. So the freezing point of that solution decreases. That decrease we are calling as depression in freezing point. That depression in freezing point we are representing with delta Tf, okay. Here freezing point of solution decrease means pure solvent freezing point more, solution freezing point less, that's why more minus less. That is pure solvent freezing point minus freezing point of solution. Okay. So this T naught F means freezing point of pure solvent. Pure solvent. But T F means freezing point of solution. Freezing point of solution. If you see the same concept in the diagram part. In the diagram part, if you see, that is in the graph with respect to the vapor pressure temperature, if you see same concept here, okay, this is liquid pure, that is pure solvent curve and this is solution curve, okay. So in this, this is the freezing point of pure solvent, that is T naught F and this is the freezing point of solution. That means when we are coming from the freezing point of pure solvent to the freezing point of solution, is temperature value decrease or increase? Decreases. That means freezing point of the pure solution decreases compared to pure solvent. Okay. That difference we are calling as depression in freezing point. That delta Tf we are calling depression in freezing point. Is it clear? Now, do we say that is any relation between 
a vapor pressure to the freezing point yes there is a relation between a vapor pressure to the freezing point if vapor pressure is more means more number of vapor particles are present in the vapor state so that what about the number of liquid particles present in the liquid state less compared to the solution here vapor pressure more here vapor pressure less so that in the liquid state only 60 molecules are present but here in liquid state 80 molecules present so where vapor pressure is more on that case number of liquid particles less in the liquid state where vapor pressure is more less on that case in the liquid state number of liquid particles more so that this one takes freezing point further decreases but here freezing point is more compared to the solution that means the vapor pressure of a liquid depending on the vapor pressure of a liquid freezing point of that liquid depends if vapor pressure is more freezing point less if vapor pressure less then freezing point more so that we can say the vapor pressure is inversely proportional to freezing point of that liquid okay vapor pressure is inversely proportional to freezing point and vapor pressure is also directly proportional to boiling point okay right is it clear right so what is depression in freezing point means when a non volatile solute is added to a solution then freezing point decreases the decrease in freezing point we are calling as depression in freezing point that we are representing as delta tf equal to t naught f minus tf so that in graph when vapor pressure decreases so if you are coming okay so this is the vapor pressure of pure liquid but this is the vapor pressure of solution so when vapor pressure decreases then automatically freezing point decreases when vapor pressure decreases freezing point decreases is it clear right now let us see for dilute solution the depression in freezing point is directly proportional to molality then if you remove the proportionality then we can get a proportionality constant that is k f that we are calling as molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant how do we define that means the depression in freezing point of one molar solution is called molar depression constant or cryoscopic constant and how do we measure that value means like this like that of kb only difference is delta h there we discussed delta h vaporization but here fusion process that's why delta h fusion okay and temperature there is boiling point but here it is freezing point okay and so delta t that is t naught minus tf is nothing but delta tf the delta tf is equal to kf into w by w a by m a into 1000 by w b so from this we can say that this molar mass of solute is inversely proportional to depression in freezing point depression in freezing point is a colligative property so that colligative property is inversely proportional to molar mass thank you for watching this video okay so in this session we discussed about what are colligative properties and how we measure the colligative properties of those and what is the relation of those colligative properties to the wanta factor and molar mass of the solute like at this video okay so if you like this video please share subscribe and share to your friends so that i will try to upload more videos okay and in next video let us see with another concept okay see all of you in next video